Fishing to the North Island is kind of like the fruit industry to the Okanagan, historically a much relied upon natural resource. Fishing has been a primary activity on the North Island for thousands of years. Long before pioneer settlement, various species were a major source of food for First Nations people. Commercial fishing continues to be a significant employer for both Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in the region. The five species of Pacific salmon that are harvested throughout the year are sockeye, also the most sought after in the early days due to their dark oily flesh and suitability for canning. Canneries were in fact initially built near sockeye runs. Then there are springs or chinooks, the largest of the species, and those which made Campbell River famous for the taiyi, a spring weighing at least 30 pounds. Pinks or humpbacks, cohos or bluebacks, and finally the chum or the dog salmon. Notably, all five species spawn in abundance in North Island rivers. Commercial fishing generally requires boats, and boats develop their own distinct character. Some vessels from our region have become quite well known. The BC-145 Saner, with its connection to the Asu and Chikite families, is part of Canadian folklore. The Soyakazi, with its storied life, is another example. Purchased by Shigakazu Matsunaga in 1939, it was confiscated by the Canadian government during World War II, but repurchased by Mr. Matsunaga in 1957. The Matsunagas donated it to the museum at Campbell River, where it is now an award-winning exhibit, with a fascinating story of hard work, family values, wartime prejudice, and hope. Then there was Sam Henderson's cod fishing vessel, the Saki, pictured here. He recalled having as many as 12 people aboard while en route to the Bones Bay Cannery at Knight's Inlet. Our region's commercial fishing has indeed been a multicultural effort. Of course, there was an invaluable contribution by Indigenous people like Peter Mountain, seen here taking a break outside the Bones Bay Cannery. In the early 1900s, First Nations people would expertly catch hundreds of salmon a day, each they used single cotton hand lines from their canoes, mostly in front of the Cape Mudge Lighthouse. Several Japanese families were also very dedicated to the industry, as well as Chinese and Indigenous women and men, especially in the canneries. Earning a living from fishing in our region began in earnest in 1904 with the opening of the cannery at Kwathiaski Cove, but production really took off in 1908 under the effective leadership of W.E. Anderson a man Harry Asu described as the best person he ever worked for. Besides hand lining, there are three main methods of fishing commercially from boats. Trolling is one, often relying upon the use of live herring as bait. Gill netting is a second method. Fishers like Angus Kerr must have been relieved once the mechanical drums were installed, making it much easier to pull in a heavy catch. These drums were in fact developed by the Finnish community of Swaintula. Here workers tend to a gill netted catch on Stewart Island's landing in 1938. A third main method of commercial fishing is purse seining. A circular net traps the fish like a large purse, which is then hoisted onto the boat deck. Here a Kwathiaski cannery worker is gathering fish caught from a seiner. He's using a brailer while boss W.E. Anderson looks on. Fishers would use a portion of their day's earnings to rent boats like these from the cannery. The Kwathiaski cannery was a busy one. In August 1937, Harry Asu alone brought in 12,000 sockeye, 16,000 pinks, and 9,000 chums. Here a day's catch awaits a hard-working crew. The cannery was buzzing from 7 in the morning until 11 at night. Its workers toiled the line, gutting, cutting, and packing fish, a laborious and grueling process. Anne Henderson Bracci, photographed here, was a supervisor on the cannery line at Bones Bay. Also at Bones Bay, we see here Alice Smith standing beside an as-of-yet unidentified worker. There are several specialized tasks in the fishing industry that would be easy to overlook. Here, Sam and Ken Henderson, alongside Arthur Butler, 
work a lead line at Bones Bay. An unidentified net repairman pauses for a photo. One means of transporting fish into the packer's hold was by pewing, a method abandoned by 1980 due to its tendency to damage fish. The age of canning locally is long over, and the industry has slowed somewhat. But one can still look out to our channels and see many fish boats traversing the local waters.